to the uh, Section 3.5 video lecture. I am Dr. Scott Spaniel, once again, uh, your instructor for statistics at Morton College. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Section 3.5, the five number summary and box plots. So this builds on a lot of stuff we've already talked about uh, in this cl class, um, and it's the last of the visual representations of um, quantitative data that we're going to look at um, in this course for a while. So uh, after today, we'll be done with chapter three, and then um, we'll actually, you should be taking a test, and then we'll get on to probability um, in chapter five will be the next thing. So for this video lecture, go ahead and take out um, your note sheets or notebook or whatever you're following along with. Uh, if you want to print off the note sheets I'm using, um, as always, they are on my math lab or Blackboard, so you can uh, get those as well. Um, and you should be on page 27, and it should look something like this. So, the five number summary uh, consists of the smallest data value in the set, uh, in the data, which is called the minimum, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the largest data value, which is called the maximum. Now, if you wanted to draw one of these by hand, these are the directions you could follow. Um, but the key thing to notice here is what a box plot looks like. So in a box plot, and I'll just use an example like this, um, the first vertical line is Q1, the second vertical line is the median, and the third vertical line is Q3. So the box makes up the interquartile range, basically. Then these things... These lines over here and over here are called whiskers. And where the whisker end ends is the, lar the this is the smallest data value that is not an outlier. And then this over here is the largest data value that is not an outlier. And if you see any um, asterisks or dots beyond the whiskers, those are outliers. And if there are any outliers, those would be larger values than the ones that fall within it. So for example, in this uh, letter X here, this uh, asterisk would actually be the maximum value and then the end of this whisker would be the minimum value because there is nothing beyond the whisker. But if there is something beyond the whisker, then that is the maximum or minimum value. So let's practice reading some of these. So to the nearest integer, what is the median of the variable x? Okay, so here's my median, right? And bring it down. That looks to be, for me, to be about 16. Okay, so the median of x is 16. To the nearest integer, what is the first quartile of variable y? Well, the first quartile is this part, so that looks to me to be about 22. Which variable has more dispersion? So which one appears to be more spread out? Well, it, to me, it looks like y is more spread out. Its range goes from 8 to about 38, so that's a range about 30, whereas x's range goes from about 3 to about 29, so that's a slightly smaller range. That would be about 26. Uh, and then the interquartile range looks a little bit bigger, uh, and so does the whisker. So which variable? I would say y, because it has the larger range, uh, and the box is slightly larger. Uh, does variable x have any outliers? Yes, because it has an asterisk. What is the value of that uh, outlier? Well, let's just see where it is about, and it looks like it's at about 29. Okay, so the asterisk is an outlier. Describe the shape of variable y. Support your position. Okay, so this is where shape comes into play. Something is symmetric if it is fairly evenly spread out on both sides. If one side of the graph is longer than the other, then it's skewed in that direction. So in this case with y, we have a much longer whisker on the left side compared to the right side and a much larger box on the left side compared to the right side. So this would be skewed left. Okay, because it's pulled out more on the left. You can kind of think of it um, as if you're pulling um, something stretchy. The side it's pulled out more on is the side that it's skewed on, if either. Okay, so 
Flip over to the next page, pause the video, and try these problems. Okay, on, whoops, sorry. Uh, pause the video and try these problems on page 28. So reading a box file. Okay, so let's try this one together as well. So to the nearest uh, integer, what is the median of variable x? So same idea as before. See where that median bar is. To me, it looks like it's 40. If you were somewhere around 40, that would be great. It doesn't need to be exactly 40 because we're estimating. To the nearest integer, what is the third quartile of variable y? So that would be the, the right side of the box. So that looks like it's about 52 to me, but somewhere around there. Which variable has more dispersion? In this case, that's fairly obviously y, right? It's a lot bigger, so it has more dispersion. Describe the shape of variable x. I would call that symmetric. The whiskers are about the same lengths, and the two sides of the box are about the same widths. So that is a fairly symmetric graph. And then for y, notice that the right-hand whisker is a lot longer than the left-hand one, and the right-hand box is slightly larger than the left-hand one, so that would be skewed to the right. Okay, so that's how you read a box plot. So that's one really important part of this, is reading a box plot. The next important part, because we're all online, I'm going to skip over this. I'm never going to ask you to make a box plot by hand. Uh, you're never probably in your life going to have to make a box plot by hand. You're always going to do this with technology. So let's skip ahead to page 30, and let's learn how to find the five-number summary and um, do a box plot by hand. So you should have this data set uh, in the Google Sheet uh, with the data set notes. This is uh, 3.5 problem one, so it looks like this. So the following data represent the percentage of workers who carpool to work for the 50 states plus Washington, D.C. The mini minimum observation was 7.2, which corresponds to Maine, and the maximum observation is 16.4, which corresponds to Hawaii. Okay. So we could find, I believe, all of the um, five-number summary uh, things using Google Sheets. So let's just write out what they are, right? So we're finding the minimum, quartile one, the median, quartile three, and the maximum. Okay, so we should be able to do each one of those. So for minimum, you just do uh, equal sign and then the word min, and then we want to find it in A, so you can either click in A or type this in A colon A, and that should give me the minimum value, and it did. To find quartile one, we can just start typing in, and if I type in quartile, And then notice when I type in quartile, it'll tell me what I want to put in. So in this case, I want to look in my data set A, and I want to find which quartile. Well, we're looking for quartile 1. So I'm going to choose data set A, comma, 1. And that'll find me quartile 1, which is 9.05. Then I want to find the median. So we just type in median in A. Then to find quartile 3, we do the same thing we did for quartile 1, except this time we're going to choose number 3. We want the third quartile. And then for the maximum, you just type in max, and then you look in column A, and I'll find it for you. So there's our five number summary using Google Sheets. So we had 7.2, 9.05, 10, 11.2, and 16.4. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to try and draw a box plot. So select A, and then choose uh, this chart symbol that we've used before over here, insert chart. Okay, and then it gave me a histogram because it just picks whichever one I think it wants, but what we want to do is we want to go find the box plot. Okay. So let's see if we can find the box plot. And if I can't, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, I can't find the box plot right now. So let's try. Oops. Nope, that's not going to work. So that's not what I want. Hmm, I'm disappointed I can't find what I'm looking for. 
in here. Oh, well, uh, that's okay. So Google doesn't seem to want to find a box plot for me right now, so that's okay. Uh, we'll just use ClassCalc to do the rest of this because I actually think in general it's actually better um, than Google Sheets anyway. So if I go, uh, if I copy my data that I already have highlighted into ClassCalc, okay, there it is. Give it a new name. I like to just use A. You could use your first, the first letter, your first name, last name, anything like that, but give it a name um, that's easier to type in. And then we want to do the one variable stats to get our five number summary. So stat, advanced, one var stats, and then put in the letter A. And then we should get the same answers we got in Google Sheets. We get um, min of 7.2, uh, quartile one of nine, which is interestingly a different number than we got before. So we'll check and make sure on that answer here in a second. A median of 10, quartile 3 of 11.2, and a max of 16.4. So the only one uh, that it didn't like that they got different answers was the um, Q1. So let me just check that real quick. Okay. Okay, I actually agree uh, with class calc's answer. So that's, we're actually going to call this 9 instead of 9.05. Um, so yeah, so we'll be good with that. So use class calc for these because obviously I didn't check this out well enough and Google doesn't do these as well as class calc. But class calc gives you all of those with just one command. And now we can try and draw a box plot. So if you go into stat, distributions and plot, and choose the one that says box plot, and then put in letter A, it should draw us the box plot. And then as before when we've done grass, if you hit this magnifying glass, it should zoom in on it. Um, and if I tell it to exclude outliers, which I want to do, it'll mark any outliers for me. So we've got our outlier of 16.4 over here, which was Hawaii. And then we've got um, our whole setup. And if you click on pieces, hopefully it'll tell you stuff, but this is in the way. Or if you look at the graph, you can see approximately where these are. So you've got your five number summary, and you've got your box plot. Um, and then if I choose quartiles, it'll actually tell me the quartiles. So you could actually skip, if all you need is the five number summary and the box plot, you can skip the one number, uh, one number summary altogether and just use the box plot. Because if you ch click this quartiles thing, it'll tell it to you. I'm just curious what happens. Yeah, and then the offset just offsets it from the x-axis. So if you make that zero, it'll put this directly on the x-axis. Uh, but the preset is one. So it offsets it uh, one from it to give you a graph that looks like that. Okay, so that's the idea of how to do this. So if you want to try the next one, uh, you can go ahead and do that, but then we'll go through it together here in a moment. Okay, so if you tried that next one on your own, that's great. Uh, but if you haven't yet, it's okay too. We'll just run through it together. So copy, command or control C, and then command or control V. Copy and paste it into uh, class calc. Delete the title and change it to I like the letter A. And then we can just do box plot, which you can go into the menu to find, which is stat. Uh, distributions and plot, box plot, or you can just type block plot, and it'll figure out what you want, and I put in A, and then hit enter, hopefully, and then I need to zoom in on it, and I want to exclude outliers, because there is one, okay, so this value over here, 69, is an outlier, so the president who was 69 years old on their inauguration day is the outlier, and then if I hit quartiles, I can get my five number summary, which is... 42, 50.5, 54.5, 57.5, and 68. And in fact, you can click on this, and it'll show you the outlier as a number as well. 
Okay, so that's how you can use class calc to help you draw box plots. So uh, back to our video for a second. That is going to be it for today. Um, as always, just make sure you're doing your um, all your work for the class. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through Remind or email. And then you should have a test for Chapter 3 coming up, uh, Chapters 1, 2, and 3 coming up. So make sure you're doing that as well. Have a good day, and we'll see you at the next lecture video.